Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 18 to 23. It's the Gospel for the Feast of the Birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary on September the 8th. St. Matthew writes, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That's from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 23 for the feast of the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary on September the 8th. It speaks to us of Mary. You know, in the beginning we read, God created the heavens of the earth. The book of Genesis tells us that darkness hung over the deep and the spirit or breath of God hovered over the abyss, awaiting God to give the word. Then God spoke, making the heavens, the earth, the sun and the stars, the waters, the animals, the fish, the birds, and the vegetation. And, Genesis tells us, God saw that it was good. All this was preparing for his supreme work, which was the creation of man. And so God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Man will be a master of this world, master of all the world, and I shall entrust it, all of it, to him, for him to rule and to populate. The account in Genesis presents the creation of our first parents as something wonderful, the climax of God's work, and as almost a new beginning in its own right, for God created man in his own likeness. Man was filled with gifts of nature and of grace. But, as we read in the next account, how disappointing and how badly it suddenly turned out. Prompted by Satan, our first parents wished to be independent of God. They contravened God's command, thinking that by so doing they would be like gods. They sinned, and so all was spoilt. A great wound, a mortal wound, was struck deep in human nature. Sin entered the human race, and with sin, death. And so death, with all its implications, spread through the whole human race. It was a bad beginning. But then God, from his love, surprised fallen man. He promised a new beginning in the fullness of time. And so it was that he prepared a special people for the coming of a Redeemer, a new Adam, whose arrival would bring untold blessings to all. So great was this Redeemer that God also prepared a new Eve, one who would be the mother of the new Adam, the mother of the Redeemer, and through him the new mother of all mankind. And this is what we celebrate today, the feast of the birth of Mary, September the 8th, the mother of the Redeemer, the mother of God and our own Heavenly Mother. She is a daughter of Eve, but is the new Eve, far more glorious than the first, precisely because she heard the word of God and fulfilled it. The first Eve, mother of all the living, besmirched herself and all her posterity with sin. The second Eve clothed herself in faith and obedience, and so was clothed in glory. This was because she heard the word of God and fulfilled it. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it, our Lord said, when a woman from the crowd praised the mother of so great a son. How great a mother! The Easter vigil exultet sings, O happy fault, 
which won for us so great a Redeemer. O happy fault committed by the first Eve too, to win for us so great a mother, the second Eve, who would lead us to her son. The angel Gabriel stood before her, addressing her with the most profound respect and love, as before one who was full of grace and favour with God. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, she said to him, be it done unto me according to your word. At that point she became the mother of God made man. Let our minds slip back to the beginning when God entrusted Adam to Eve's keeping. Eve, whom he had formed from Adam's side. Now God entrusts his own son, the new Adam, to her keeping, to her who was the new Eve. He prepared for his son a wonderful mother, and this wonderful mother is ours. At the Annunciation, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Father entrusted his son to Mary's keeping. Let us then, by the grace of this same Holy Spirit, entrust ourselves to her keeping. Years later, she would stand before the cross of her son, watching what sin was doing to him, and in intimate union with him in the work of our redemption. From the cross, she would hear his words as he said to his beloved disciple, There is your mother. The church has always understood those words as applying to each one of us. The new Eve, Mary the mother of the Redeemer, is our mother, and Christ has entrusted each of us to her, and wants each of us to entrust ourselves to her. That is what consecration to Mary means. It means a complete entrusting of ourselves to her care and guidance. So let us do that as we think of the birthday of our mother, the new Eve. Mary is our mother and our model. She is the mother and model of the whole church. God has given to the world a mother, the mother of all mankind. Let us entrust ourselves to her completely, every day remembering what she said at the wedding feast of Cana. Do whatever he tells you. If we let her, every day she will help us to do just that. Let us love her, pray to her, and be guided by her. 